Hey, lady. Yes. Do you have a notebook? A notebook? A, a, a spare notebook. I, I have this. Oh, what is it? It's a composition. Oh, those are good. Can I touch it? Can you touch it? No, what are you, some kind of creep? Hey, I'm Joe, and these are confessions of an office supply junkie. Hey, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve. Welcome to another episode of Confessions of an Office Supply Junkie. Today, I'm going to talk about the crazy composition book caper. I've used uh, various uh, methods of writing over the years, and for several decades, I experimented with different uh, paper methods of writing. And as I reach off camera here, let me just show you a few examples. Um, these kinds of spiral notebooks, the vertically bound, the ride in the rain notebooks, the reporter's notebooks or evidence pads, right, which are very cool. These are very neat. We'll talk about those in a future episode. Numerous hardbound journal books, which I went on a kick with for a few years, like a lot of people who have discovered journaling do. But early on, I would say back in the late 1980s, early 1990s, I had decided I wanted to start uh, writing more seriously, I wanted to do it by hand. I think I had recently discovered um, uh, mechanical pencils, and so I um, started with some cheap little spiral notebooks. Okay. Now, everybody who's been to school in the Western world knows about spiral notebooks, right? The metal coil, the way the pages are bound to the little metal coil with the perforated holes. <sighs> I hated spiral notebooks. I hated them in school. Uh, you know, a fresh notebook that has never been used, it has all this blank paper. I like that. I really like that about a notebook, a fresh, unused notebook. but. The problem I have with spiral notebooks is once you start to use them, and especially in school, um, it was all too easy and tempting to tear the pages out. When I was a kid, you didn't have the perforated kind with a little thing where the paper can tear off easily. But everybody would tear out their sheets of paper out of the spiral notebook and leave those little raggedy pieces behind. Is there even a word for that? The little torn, ragged remnants of the spiral notebook page that gets stuck in the coil binding and you have to get your little Bic pen and kind of pry them out and pull them out one at a time and it makes a big, huge mess. I don't know if there's a word for that, but it seems like spiral notebooks, the way they were bound, it was all too easy to tear pages out. It was all too easy to treat them like they were loose leaf filler paper instead of being hardbound paper. And I had forgotten about this for years and years until I started writing in some of these cheap little spiral notebooks. I had several of them here. And this was in the early 1990s, maybe late 1980s. But basically, I got to the point where I decided, you know what, I need a more serious kind of writing situation. And that's when I had remembered, oh, composition books. and. So the other thing was, when I was using spiral notebooks, I decided that I didn't want co uh, wide-ruled composition books. I wanted college-ruled because I wrote in kind of a small little scrawl with mechanical pencil. I had a small size script. I wanted to take more advantage of that and, and get more lines per page. So I wanted to get a, a college-ruled composition book. Real simple, right? So I went to one of my local big box office supply retailers. This was in 1998, I'm thinking, and um, June of 1998. I went to one of my local big box retailers for office supplies and looked around, looked around, and all they had was wide ruled in the classic composition style book, you know, the heavy cardboard cover bound. Um, all they had was wide ruled. But they have this notebook. This was a composition book. This is made by Mead, um, but it was plastic covered. 
It's plastic laminated to the same kind of inner cardboard papery type stuff. And it was college ruled. I said, okay, I, I wanted the original heavy cardboard cover that has the mottled black and white kind of surface to it, the color to it. But anyways, I said, okay, I'll go with this more modern plastic bound composition book in the college rule. So I did. I started using it. This was June of, ni of 1998. So June, June in, in the American Southwest is a very hot month, right? So I would leave this notebook in my car and I had my little writing kit with my mechanical pencils and stuff. And I would leave it in my car so I would always have my writing things with me whenever I wanted to go out and do stuff and go to coffee shops or wherever and do some writing. And I noticed that this notebook, if you left it in the car, it has this plastic cover on the outside laminated to a paperish cardboard cover on the inside. And what would happen was the whole notebook would poof up. The, both front and back covers would bow out and warp. Now you might even be able to see the way that cover is still warped to this day. But you leave the notebook in a hot car and it was just totally poofed out on both front and back covers. Obviously there was some kind of differential temperature expansion going on between the plastic and the paper binding uh, underneath it, the way they're laminated together. So, I mean, I was satisfied with the composition book, you know, and I, and I wrote using, as I said, mechanical pencil, and at the time I was writing on only the one side of the page because I didn't want to smear my the writings with my hand on the other side. Anyways, so I got to the point where I got tired of this um, and I noticed that in the back of the notebook, the inside back cover was some contact information, a website and a mailing address of the Mead Corporation. And so I said, okay, I'm just going to send me off a letter. Now, I can't remember at the time whether it was an email or an actual letter, but anyways, I sent them a note about, hey, I got this plastic laminated composition book and it warps in the sun, in the heat, and the cover poofs up, and I really, I couldn't find college ruled in my local store. Could you guys help me out with somehow with this? I didn't expect any response back from them, but what, <laughs> what I did get back was five, this is actually six, maybe six composition books. College Rule, the classic black and white cover. Uh, they sent me free of charge in the mail, um, surprisingly enough. And then also a little pocket-sized composition book, which I don't, I don't know where that, what happened to that over the years. It's probably gone. But anyways, I was blown away. And so I've always had a a warm spot in my heart for the Mead Corporation uh, regarding the uh, the fact that they sent me a whole stack of composition books. Now, um, this plastic covered composition book that started this whole thing went from June of 98 to October of 98 and I used the whole book. And then I began using the other notebooks. Uh, this one is uh, October of 98 to December of 99. This one is January 2000 to January 2001, and it's unfinished. And I think the reason why is because at this time, I went up to Oregon for nine months for a business assignment, and I probably left it behind. And I got into other writing methods, which we'll talk about later. Then there's a whole gap of like eight years. And I, I did a whole bunch of other kinds of writing methods. I was using um, the Hipster PDA. I was using uh, a Palm Pilot-based operating system. Um, I was using index card uh, writing systems. I was using, uh, yeah, sort of um, electronic note-taking kind of writing and different things like that. A lot of those old files, those old <laughs> ones I wrote on my Palm Pilot because they got archived on my old computer and eventually the, I guess the hard drive crashed or something, but those were never archived very well. Anyway, those are all gone, but I still have the composition books. So I have starting picking up again August to November of 2009. So I wrote a whole composition book in a matter of just, uh, you know, three or four months. And when I picked it up again, the composition book here, remember I left off in 2001 with um, still using mechanical pencil. And when I picked it up again in 2009, I'm now I'm using blue-black fountain pen ink 
with red ink corrections. Okay, so I was I was all of a sudden a fountain pen user by that time, and then we go to um, January. Let's see, December two thousand nine up to, again, a partially used notebook. I had a habit of doing this, which is a whole other subject, by the way, for another blog. Um, I don't remember what the last article here was dated because it's really long. Oh, this was a book I was writing. That's right. This was Loser's Blend. This was the original manuscript handwritten of my novelette that I've been working on, unfinished, and that's why I left the book so I could finish it by hand. Okay, and then we go to February 2010 to July 2012, and then <laughs> typewriters rock. Okay, I think my grandson did that. And then I went to, um, I think I ran out of the last notebooks of that series, and I went to back to, I went to Staples this time, and they had their sugarcane pulp, the Bagasse paper composition book, in a brownish kind of recycled style cover. And what's interesting about this is it is wide ruled. Now remember the whole composition book caper was about I wanted college ruled because I, I wrote in a little scrawl with mechanical pencil and I wanted to make it more efficient. Well, it turns out that once I had switched over to fountain pens, I discovered that in order to make the letters look a little more legible, I really needed to write in a slightly larger script size because the little loops in your letters will fill up with a fountain pen nib if it, if it uh, is too small. So that's when I kind of changed my whole tack and decided, well, you know, for fountain pens, you really want a wide-ruled notebook. And it was a lot easier to find wide-ruled composition books in the office supply stores because they're sold to school-age kids. It's considered somehow in America here, school-age kids have wide-ruled and college people have, you know, college-ruled somehow. Anyway, so I had used this uh, notebook and then when I used it up, I couldn't find at the time, when I went back to replace it, I couldn't find any more of these sugarcane pulp paper uh, composition books, which, by the way, is really nice paper for fountain pens. But I ended up getting another Mead uh, style. It's actually an Office Max style uh, brand, but it looks like a Mead. And it's wide ruled again, but it's standard paper. But yeah, so this was the latest one, and I haven't really finished it because... It goes up to, when's the last date on this? Wow, I've been writing a long pieces on this. May of 2015 was the last um, thing I did, and I think I started doing more typewriter blogging or something, rough drafting on typewriters. But anyway, that is my sort of history, my composition, the crazy composition book caper, how I got a stack of composition books because I was complaining to Mead about the, the one where the cover warps in the sun. Um, I really like composition books. They're great to write in. I like the way they're bound. They're more permanent uh, the, way, the way they are. They have a heavier cover. They're more permanently bound than uh, spiral notebooks, and it just discourages you from ripping paper out of them. You don't really want to rip paper out of a composition book because of the way it's bound. Um, and, you know, they're actually cloth, the, they're actually stitched. I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually thread stitching the bindings together. Um, so I've gone over the years from different methods of journaling, as I indicated earlier, um, from books of various kinds, composition books, journal books. And one of the things where I evolved away from composition books more so in recent years is because I discovered what I call random access journaling. And you can think of any bound notebook as kind of being a serial access system that is like, it's like a, a magnetic tape. It's linear, a serial order. The pages are in serial sequential order and you can't reorder them. You can't write one page on one topic and take it out, file it away under that topic, write another page about another topic and file it away under that topic. I discovered that I really had a diverse uh, selection of interests, uh, anything from video uh, production to 
video art theory to photography to abacuses and mazes and airships and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I found that what really worked for me was to journal or sketch journals or writing different ideas on individual sheets of paper. And then I would write a little header that kind of described the title, the date, what it was about. And I would uh, hole punch it and put them in three ring binder notebooks. And I really started doing this, what I call random access journaling, where the pages can be reordered at random based on the subject matter. So I have different spiral notebooks with uh, sections in them for different subjects. So instead of my blogging being just sequential now, it's more thematic and subject related. And so that's why some of these um, composition books were kind of unused or only partly used because I was switching back and forth between various methods of journaling. I think really um, the random access journaling with individual sheets of paper really works best because it also works good for typewriter journaling. You can type individual sheets and you can store them away based on subject matter. You can file them away uh, thematically. Well, this is Joe Van Cleave, and I am an office supply junkie.